Chapter 7, Section 4. In this section, we examine a technique known as integration by parts for finding integrals. This is one of the more complex techniques, so we'll take it slow, and you can also find alternate examples of this technique in the helpful, helpful handout section located with these videos. Based on the product rule, this method will help us to change complicated integrals into simpler integrals that we can compute. So let's talk about the integral of x e to the x dx. Now, if we saw x e to the x in a derivative problem, it could be the result of a product rule. However, if we were taking the derivative function, there's only one term here, x e to the x, and not two. So that means that we probably didn't start with a product rule. Integration by parts is sort of the opposite direction of the product rule. So let's see how it can help. The general formula looks like this. The integral of u v prime dx equals u times v minus the integral of u prime v dx. Now what are this u and this v prime? So what's going to happen is when we have an integral with two different types of functions multiplied together, we're going to pick one of them to be u and one of them to be v prime, and then we're going to use this formula. Now, how do we pick the u and the v prime? In general, you want to pick your u as something that will become simpler when you take the derivative. Here, our choices are x and e to the x. Since e to the x doesn't change when we take the derivative, it doesn't become simpler. So here, we're going to let our u be the x, which means our v prime is our e to the x. Once we have our u and our v prime, we need to find u prime and v. So again, u is our x, and v prime is our e to the x. To get u prime, we take the derivative of u. The derivative of x is just 1. To get our v, we take the antiderivative of e to the x. We're integrating it. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Once you have all four pieces, we're going to plug this into the general formula. So now we can rewrite our original integral, x e to the x dx, equal to u times v, which is x e to the x, minus the integral of u prime v dx. u prime is 1, v is e to the x. Now notice here that our second integral is now just e to the x dx. That's something we know how to integrate. So now we know that our original integral equals x e to the x, that's our first term, minus the antiderivative of e to the x, is e to the x. Since we don't have bounds, we still have our plus c. So now, we can see what the original function is, and when we take the derivative, we should get back what was in the integral. How do we pick u and v prime? Like I said, we want to pick u to be something simpler. So I just want to illustrate here what would happen if we had picked it the wrong way. Notice that if we had let u equal e to the x, and v prime equal x, okay, so if we had chose these the opposite way, then our u prime, the derivative of e to the x, would now be e to the x again, and when we take the antiderivative of x, we get x squared over 2. When we plug this into our general integration by parts formula, our integral, x e to the x dx, now becomes u times v, so e to the x times x squared over 2, minus the integral of u v prime, or v prime v, excuse me. So u prime is e to the x, v is x squared over 2. Notice that our second integral is now more complicated than what we started with. So that means we picked our u and our v prime wrong. If this happens when you're trying to do this, then you should go back and pick it the other way, so that your u is the other term and your v prime is also switched. Okay. So, choosing these values can be a little tricky, but you'll get used to it and the different ways to pick as you do more of these. Okay, So, let's look at the integral of ln x dx. This is sort of a trick question, but it comes up a lot in Calc 2. Now, notice that we can rewrite natural log of x as natural log of x times 1. Everything has an imaginary times 1 there, and we don't ever write the 1. But here we can, and we're going to need to, because it's the only way we'll be able to integrate natural log of x. So we have natural log of x and 1. Now, 
I'll give you a heads up and tell you that whenever you see a natural log of x in an integration by parts problem, you're going to want to let your u be the ln. So here, my u is ln x, and my v prime is just 1, which means my u prime, the derivative of ln x, is 1 over x, and my v, which is the antiderivative of 1, is just x. Because again, if you have a constant and you find the antiderivative, it picks up the variable of integration. So that tells me that I can now write my integral as u times v, so natural log of x times x, minus the integral of u prime v. So we have an x and a 1 over x dx. This is nice because the x and the 1 over x will cancel to just be 1. So when we simplify, we have ln x times x, that's just the first term, minus the integral of 1 dx. Well, that's something we know how to do. We know how to find the antiderivative of a constant. So again, we just end up with natural log of x times x, that's the first term, minus x, because the 1 just picks up the variable of integration. And then, of course, since we don't have bounds, plus c. Let's look at another example that's based on the same one, only now we're going to stick some bounds on there. Okay, so we're going to do a definite integral. So if we were going to evaluate the integral from 1 to 5, natural log of x dx, using integration by parts, again, we would do a quick integration by parts, with the same problem we just did. Our u is ln x, our u prime is 1 over x, v prime is 1, v is x. So we have the integral from 1 to 5, ln x, times the invisible one we don't usually write. And we know that that's going to equal ln x times x minus the integral from 1 to 5 of 1 over x times x dx. Okay, so again, this last integral is going to cancel down to just be a 1. So again, we can use our shorthand notation. We know we're evaluating from 1 to 5. This last integral, that's just a 1 here. So we're just doing that step again. So we're simplifying. So now, we know that our final answer will be ln x times x minus x. Again, we don't need the plus c because now we have some bounds. And we're going from 1 to 5. So again, we get the general antiderivative. And then we evaluate it over the bounds. So we're going to do the upper bound first, which is 5, minus the lower bound. You always want to use parentheses if there's more than one term. So we have the natural log of 5 times 5 minus 5. That's what we get when we plug in a 5 everywhere minus parentheses, natural log of 1 times 1 minus 1. These are all just numbers. So we simplify a little bit, put it all in the calculator, and we get 4.047. So again, we can incorporate bounds into this method by just finding the general antiderivative and then evaluating it over the bounds we're looking at without the c. All right, let's do one more. So let's say we want to find the integral of x cubed ln x dx using integration by parts. So as I mentioned before, whenever you have an ln x in the problem, you want that to be your u, which means our v prime is x cubed. Now the first step again is to find our u prime and our v. So u prime is 1 over x, the derivative of ln x, and v is the antiderivative of x cubed, which is just x to the fourth over 4. So now, we plug it into our general formula, so we're going to do u times v minus the integral of u prime v dx. So here, our original integral becomes u, which is ln x, times v, x to the fourth over 4, minus the integral of 1 over x, which is u prime, times x to the fourth over 4 dx. Now notice in this second integral, we have an x to the fourth on top and an x on the bottom. That x in the bottom will cancel with one of the x's on top. So continuing on, what will happen is that last integral, right over here, will simplify to x cubed over 4. Because again, the x on the bottom canceled with one of the x's on top. Now, x to the cubed over 4 is something that we know how to do. Remember, the 4 is just a constant. It's a 1 fourth, so we can pull it out. The first term just follows along. That's the u times v. So we have natural log of x times x to the fourth over 4 minus, we pull the 1 fourth out, and we're left with x cubed dx. We know how to find the antiderivative of x cubed. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So the first term just follows. So we have ln x times x to the fourth over four minus one fourth. And now the antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over four. Since there's no bounds on our integral, we have our plus c. The last step is just to simplify this last term by multiplying these fours together. So our final answer is natural log of x times x to the fourth over four minus x to the fourth over 16 plus c. As I said at the beginning of the lecture, you can find more examples done out of integration by parts in the folder labeled helpful integration examples found with the chapter seven videos.